Uh, morena kia koutou katoa. So for those of you who are still coming in, if you can find yourselves a uh, seat, there's a couple of tables down this end as well, um, so we can get the conference underway. Nei rā te mihi atu kia koutou katoa, nau mai whakatau mai ki Connections 22. Welcome to Connections 22! Okay, we can do a little bit better than that. Welcome to Connections 22! Tēnā koutou katoa. I'm Jenny May Clarkson, your MC for the next couple of uh, days. Actually, this is my third time here, so thank you for inviting me back. Uh, well, actually, you didn't have anything to do with that. But anyway, I'm here again, um, whether you like it or not, but it is a pleasure for me to be here for the third year in a row. I te tuatahi, uh, me mihi kātika ki te mana whenua. Uh, ko James, ko Jacinta, uh, Raua, ko Jacinta. Um, just acknowledging once again uh, the mana whenua who um, we're here this morning for the whakatau. Uh, ai, nei rā te mihi atu ki a Raua, uh, meki ki a koutou katoa. All right. As we know, okay, so my job is just to get things moving, so let's get straight into that. Connections is an opportunity for leaders across play, active recreation, and sport to connect and share knowledge, expertise, and passion to help us keep pace with the challenges of a modern world. And gosh, there's been some challenges, right? Creating opportunities for New Zealanders to be active and improve well-being. This year, our theme is creating a brighter future. Um, and uh, Raywin will be with us uh, shortly to open up proceedings. But first, there's a whole lot of boring stuff that we have to do, housekeeping. Everybody knows where the Whare Paku is? Yeah, um, and in an emergency, staff here uh, at Te Pai will help us out, just don't panic. Uh, all emergency exits are well lit, and the assembly point is outside and across the road on the green, which is directly opposite uh, the exhibition halls. Right, can we get on to the interaction part so we can get things going? Thanks, Bob. Over the next couple of days, we'll be utilising technology to manage questions and answer through the events ear app. Now, hopefully, you've all downloaded the app, um, which will allow you to view the program and speaker bios, message other delegates, and ask questions during keynote sessions. <clears throat> and actually, that's a really important part, because for many of you who have been to these Connections conferences, that is uh, one of the ways that we um, communicate uh, and ask questions of those keynote speakers that'll be on stage. This is an interactive conference, and so um, I do encourage you to ask those questions. Actually, we're also going to have a couple of roving mics, so if you dare, um, we can hand you a mic to ask a question. Um, to download the app, uh, follow the three easy steps. I'm not going to go through it all. Um, and also, if you're inclined to share on social media, follow along on the at SportNZ channels and share using the hashtag Connections 2022. Also a reminder to please put your phones on silence throughout the conference. All right, me kōkiritato, let's get on with things. Unfortunately, the Minister of Sport, the Honourable Grant Robertson, was unable to attend Connections today, but he has recorded a personal welcome message. Mā taki mai. Kia ora koutou katoa, no mai haere mai, welcome to the 2022 Connections Conference. I'm really sorry to not be able to join you all in person today, but it's great to see so many people from the sector gather together again. This conference is a fantastic opportunity to come together, connect with peers, share stories, ideas and challenges, and work together to strengthen the play, active recreation and sports sector. It's not been an easy couple of years for our sector and for New Zealanders in general as the impacts of COVID-19 continue to be felt. But despite this, we have seen real progress made towards driving changes across the sector that will help future-proof all of play, sport and active recreation. What I'm seeing now more than ever is a sector that's open to transformation and developing and implementing initiatives that meet the ever-changing and diverse needs of our communities. On the back of overcoming the various challenges in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, this year's conference is focused on planning for the future to ensure that the sector continues to drive participation and physical activity levels for the benefit of all New Zealanders. It's all about exploring new ways of doing things and working more collaboratively, both within the sector and across government, 
so that our impact is wide-reaching. We've seen what we can be achieved when we work across agencies with initiatives like Healthy Active Learning, which has been extended to include 40% of schools in Kura across the Mutu and supporting healthy and active school environments. The projects we've seen come out of Tumanawa Active Aotearoa over the last couple of years are also great examples of the sector working with their communities to deliver outcomes that place a premium on inclusion, equity and understanding the needs of the community. Creating meaningful change does take collaboration. And the next two days are, to, are going to provide a great opportunity to hear from key speakers challenging the way we view the future and predicting what the needs of the sectors and our communities might be. Empowering communities, developing a more bicultural approach to the way we see and do things, considering the impact on the environment, and designing more multi-purpose venues are just a few of the key things that should be driving our thinking and our work in this space. We have real opportunity over the next few years to contribute to the transformation of the entire play, sport and active recreation system to deliver on our focus areas and drive greater diversity and inclusivity across the sector. And I know that you'll be seizing these opportunities with both hands. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for the mahi that you have done and your significant contribution to improving the well-being of New Zealanders. Some of your outstanding work will be acknowledged at the awards evening tonight. I hope the next two days allow you to challenge your thinking as we move towards the future of play, sport and active recreation to ensure we're leading the way in creating opportunities for more people in Aotearoa to be physically active. Enjoy the conference. Kia ora koutou katoa. The Honourable Grant Robertson. I would now like to welcome to the stage Raywin Lovett, Deputy Chair Sports NZ, to officially open our conference. Please, ladies and gentlemen, Raywin Lovett. Thanks, Jenny May. Kia ora tato. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today to officially open Connections Conference 2022. And as the Minister have said, you know, with so many familiar faces in the room, this is a great opportunity to connect over the mahi that we are all delivering and to talk about and share those challenges that we've all been experiencing, to look at the opportunities of how we can do things better and really importantly, to challenge our own thinking about how we are going about things. We've got a great lineup of very influential speakers who we'll be able to listen to in some really good um, workshop sessions, which will help us guide our thinking as to how we can create a brighter future for play, active recreation and sport, and how we can allow the next generation to access the benefits that come with more physically active Aotearoa. When we reflect on last year's conference in the Waikato, where the theme was managing and le uh, sorry, leading and managing change, there's no doubt that the past year or so have, been, have given us plenty of opportunities to practice the skills that we talked about there. But it does feel as though we are now coming into, out of some of those darker times and we're looking at a brighter future. And the challenges we've faced have given us time for reflection and they've opened some doors and some windows that might not otherwise have been opened. So adversity, leads us to it leads us to grow our outlook as leaders and we're going to hopefully with this conference continue to use that opportunity to grow as we move our gaze from the past and to the future i want to thank you all again for being here and i look forward to seeing much more of the impactful mahi that we have delivered over the and, and as we're going to deliver that over the coming year so with this, I am pleased to officially open Connections 2022. Thank you, Raywin. Um, it gives me great pleasure now to welcome to the podium our very first keynote speaker, someone you'll obviously all know quite well, Raylene Castle, Group Chief Executive of Sports in New Zealand, Ihi Aotearoa. Please welcome Raylene to the stage. Thanks, Jenny May. Ina mana, ina rangatira, tēnā koutou. Ina tahu, tēnā koutou. Ina manahiri kura, katoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, 
tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Pukuhiwea, a toku mona. Ko Manaia, toku awa. Ko Hokianga, toku moana. Ko Nati Kaharo, toku hapu. Ko Napuhi, toku iwi. Ko Tapiti, toku marae. Ko Tamaki Makoro, te kainga inaia nei. Ko Raylan Castle, toku ingoa. Ko O2 Temu Fakarai o Ihi o Teroa. Tena koto, tena koto, tena koto katoa. Thank you very much. It's really great to be here. I really love to see so many familiar faces in the crowd um, and a whole lot of new faces, which is a really great opportunity uh, for us to get together and meet some new people. We call this conference Connections for a Reason. And we designed the program so that you can hopefully learn some things. Uh, but also get to know a group and a cohort and some colleagues um, that can help us all as we work through not only the challenges but the amazing opportunities that this sector uh, puts in front of us. Before I start, I would just like to acknowledge um, the passing this morning of an Olympian, um, Shane Reid, who was a triathlete um, at the Beijing Olympics, and he passed this morning, so I wonder if we could just have a moment's silence for Shane, please. Thank you. So this morning, um, I get the opportunity to talk to you about the future of the Play Active Reckon Sports System. Um, it is, uh, I'll wander through some, some subjects and some topics that um, we will all be very familiar to you, but I think it's important uh, for us to recognise uh, that uh, there is some really great mahi happening already. And we shouldn't underestimate the progress, even though we've worked through um, uh, the very uh, challenges of COVID, the challenges of a changing landscape. There is some really great work happening. But there's no doubt we continue to face an environment that will continue to change. Um, as our lead guest speaker, Sahel, uh, will follow me, um, he's the guy that's really going to take this conversation to the next level and challenge us um, in a way um, to think differently about the futures. So I'm just going to start with a video. It will be uh, familiar to you because the work that Sport New Zealand did in bringing together the five PO of the futures was done uh, biculturally and it was also done in consultation with the sector. choose the best way to serve their people. Mana Māori, giving effect to the treaty means working in a true relationship with Māori that is mana enhancing and good for New Zealand. It means working in a partnership that is based on pono, authenticity, tika, integrity, and aroha, respect. Oranga tayao, oranga tangata. This po recognises that the deep and special relationship between people and to tie out the environment of Aotearoa is recognised, valued and celebrated. That our outdoor experiences are accessible to all New Zealanders. That the environment is safe, cared for and we all understand our roles as kaitaki. If the land is well, then so are the people. Muri ora. Striving for well-being for all means, the power of physical activity is universally recognised and prioritised to improve our well-being. The human right of every person to be active is championed. Leisure time is valued and protected by individuals, employers, society and government. This is an ongoing journey. We'll continue to monitor change and use these posts to drive positive change for Aotearoa New Zealand. We will never be lost. We are the hull of a great canoe. So the, that uh, framework really uh, creates a huge number of opportunities for us. The reality is that there's lots of great work in mahi happening already. Um, and now I'm going to talk to you about some of those things um, that uh, are delivering great work already. 
So healthy active learning is something that um, was uh, probably the best example of the government coming together and using uh, three of its major, or two major government departments being education and health, uh, working with Sport New Zealand uh, to bring together a program that many of you know and are very close to, uh, because ultimately you're the ones in those communities delivering healthy active learning. Now in over 800 schools in Kura, as the minister spoke to, but I think the most important thing about healthy active learning um, is not just that it's talking to our young tamariki um, and, and ex, um, giving them an educational experience that they will form a long-term uh, engagement and love of physical activity, but that we've altered it for the communities in which it's in. So it's different when we deliver it in Gisborne Tarafati than what it is in Northland uh, to what it is here uh, in Christchurch. Uh, the engagement that we have in those schools, the connections that we have are different, um, and that's what locally led looks like. So that talks to the PO um, in the future's uh, work of actually ensuring that we're not thinking about an idea and delivering it across the motto consistently. Because the reality is our communities are so different and they have different demands. So Healthy Active Learning is doing that um, in a way that is bringing the values of those own communities, not just bicultural but also multi multicultural, um, if that's a requirement of the community, um, to deliver to our young people. Te Manawa was a fund um, that was an evolutionary fund can, from Kiwi Sport, and I know when it first got launched there was some anxiety around how um, we actually transitioned some of the funding out of Kiwi Sport into Te Manawa. The reality is that it is delivering consistently uh, to the uh, people in our community that are missing out, be that women and girls, uh, be that uh, people with a disability, or um, our Māori and Pacifica communities, particularly in areas of high deprivation. Um, this fund is talking to those groups, um, and I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank the RST network who are so critical in ensuring that we um, distribute this, this um, funding efficiently. I've been fortunate in my touring around New Zealand and visiting RSTs to see some of the Tumana investment um, actually happen um, in real life and actually the communities that it's affecting. And I think my favourite uh, one, um, I've had lots of favourites, so I'm not going to court, I'm, someone will get disappointed when I say I've had a favourite, right? But I did have a moment that really struck a chord with me, and it was at the Otara Shopping Centre. I grew up in um, East Auckland, not that far away from Otara Shopping Centre, and we would go, mum and dad, um, they have a flea market on a Sunday morning, and once a year we'd clear out the house, we'd go on the back of dad's ute, um, and we'd go to the flea market at Otara, so I've got a connection with it. We arrived, um, they've got a big container it's set up and it's basically around teaching young people in that community how to ride a bike. So amazing, um, two bike mechanics, a whole lot of donated bikes, um, and it's engaging the community in a way that they never otherwise would have had an opportunity um, to uh, have access to riding bikes. Friday nights they take young people on those bikes and they teach them how to ride on the roads in, in what is now a really busy suburb of Auckland. That wasn't the only thing. Um, they had, as we were standing there, um, this uh, older lady uh, came up on her scooter, motorised scooter, and she was um, unwell. You could see from, um, uh, she had some bandages on and things, and she came up, she drove her scooter up, and Felipe was the name of the mechanic, and she said, oh, Felipe, I think there's something wrong with my motor scooter. And um, Felipe came out and he looked at it and he said, no, no, I think your motor scooter's okay. I'm sure it's fine. Um, just um, um, pop back next week and I'll have a look at it next week. And of course, there was nothing wrong with her scooter, right? She was just looking for the connection in that community. They've got basketballs, basketball hoops. They've got um, a kai station where people are giving and picking up kai. Um, and that, for me, was the essence of the type of funding that we're looking to deliver locally led in the community, actually delivering outcomes um, for our young people um, and the wider community engagement. I think the other thing that, um, that's really changing in a woman and girl sense is the three World Cups, um, one that we've already finished hosting. So Australia won um, the Cricket World Cup, um, hosted a final hosted here in Christchurch, uh, where we sold out 6,500 seats at Hagley Oval uh, to a game where New Zealand wasn't in the final. Australia played England. You had amazing um, 
uh, crowd, an incredible game of cricket, um, and a group of new fans that engaged in a way that they wouldn't previously have engaged. Currently, we're in the middle of a Rugby World Cup, Women's Rugby World Cup. Been fortunate to go to a lot of games uh, to see um, the engagement, a sold out opening match uh, at um, Eden Park. And I'm sure uh, Steve Chu, who's in the room here today, won't mind me sharing that when they bid um, for that event, um, I was actually on the other side of the fence bidding for Australia, hoping to win that, and obviously the Kiwis won. At the time, I was very unhappy. Now I'm very happy that that was the case. Um, that uh, the plan was to have the opening game at Waitakere, and we, the Royal We, were anxious about whether we would sell out 6,500 tickets. Now, that's a huge compliment, not only to the work that's been done across the world in promoting women's sport, rugby, um, New Zealand rugby, um, and also the event itself to promote those, but to have a sold out um, facility at Eden Park um, and have a really different crowd, affordable tickets, access, um, and young people having a chance to, to watch their female heroes play the game um, is something that we should be enormously proud of. And then we roll into FIFA, um, the FIFA Women's World Cup, and um, it will be an event like New Zealand has never seen. Uh, there will be more uh, fans uh, travel and follow um, this event uh, then turned up for uh, the Rugby World Cup in 2011 um, and a Lions Tour. So we were very fortunate to secure USA in the draw. Um, uh, that, uh, they are defending champions. They are the most high profile women's team arguably in the world. Uh, and they will bring, 20, we, we estimate, at least 25,000 fans on their own without all the other teams that arrive. Um, it's going to be enormous. But what it does is continue to put women and girls um, on the front uh, page of the papers um, in front of uh, New Zealanders and internationally. They're expecting a, an audience of two billion people um, to watch the final, that's the FIFA's target. So um, that's coming and it's coming at us really quickly. So um, a huge um, promotion of what women and girls and international sport can look like. We also signed during the year a very significant uh, agreement if you think about the responsibilities that Sport New Zealand has to our own satirity commitments in relation to the Treaty of Waitangi um, as a, um, a crown entity and the responsibilities that we have. So on one hand, we have responsibilities um, as a crown entity. On the other hand, we have a strategy uh, which we know by culturalism actually brings um, increased value to us as an organisation and to the sector. Um, this agreement uh, was a long time in the making. Te Huinga Takaro uh, is an agreement with the um, group that has been formed uh, to lead the Māori NSO, so the advisory group that will sit over the top um, and support the Māori NSO network. So that is um, a significant agreement for us, allows us not only at Sport New Zealand to have a group to engage with directly, um, but also allows all the NSO in the room to have another group to engage in from a Māori, a Māori perspective. So really significant um, signing from our perspective. But there are some things we need to address as a sector. It's all not going swimmingly well. Don't want to be the negative person that starts the, um, <laughs> the, the Connections 22, but we do face some challenges. Um, climate change. Climate change is something that is coming at us at a fast um, rate of knots. You will have seen all the reports, you will have seen um, the weather events, you will have seen the challenges that we're facing um, in New Zealand. Um, and, the, and the upsetting, you know, the, the carbon tax emissions with farmers at the moment, you know, not going to get into debate and right and wrong of that. But certainly the reality is it is upsetting um, uh, many parts of our sector, not only to the climate, but to the impact it has commercially. We know different. Um, and we have recognised that as a, in our uh, Sport New Zealand strategy, it is a pillar that hasn't been identified as clear as, clear as we would like it to be. Um, and that's certainly something that you could expect to see um, in our strategy um, as we, our strategy evolution into 2024. Excuse me. Biculturalism. I think I've touched on this already, but it is something that, um, make, as a New Zealander, makes me feel incredibly proud. Um, the mihi Fokato welcome this morning is something that only we can do. Seeing our black ferns do a haka um, and present themselves to the world on the world stage um, that was written specifically them makes me really proud. Um, the work that Sport New Zealand's doing um, on our own bicultural journey and many of the other organisations in this room who are... Um, embarking on their own journeys is something that's only going to make us stronger as a nation. We're all at different stages and that's okay. 
because we're all on the journey and it will all mean um, something slightly different to us, different to us. But what I do know and understand is that as a nation, um, as we work down this um, and have lots of um, opportunities to work together, we're going to end up in a better place because of it. I do just want to address financial viability. Um, there's not an organisation in this room that doesn't go to sleep at night worried about what the financial future looks like. We are under pressure, um, whether it be class four gaming. There's no doubt with a sinking league policy that the DIA and local councils have, um, that source of funding is under pressure. What I can tell you is that Sport New Zealand is in constant dialogue with DIA, and there is some work by some of the major four or three or four big trusts to see if there's some more effective ways um, in which they could engage to give DIA the comfort they need and local councils the comfort they need um, that the funds that are, are being received uh, through that process can be distributed in a way that makes um, everyone feel more comfortable. I think there's also a... a um, uh, an element uh, that certainly we understand that if government are controlling betting, be it TAB, be it um, uh, Class 4 gaming, and we've got harm reduction processes in place, that's where it gives us an opportunity to sure, ensure that we're managing both sides of that discussion. If we don't manage it and it ends up going offshore, that's where we ultimately and perhaps potentially have some even greater problems to deal with. So those are the conversations we're having. Um, <clears throat> secondly, um, uh, we are, as a sector, um, doing some work with Julie Morrison um, in leading what the cost um, of running our sector actually is. So trying to understand what it costs for all of our organisations, what does the sport and rec sector, um, play active rec and sport, all of the different parts of it actually look like, how do we engage, how much does it cost, and ultimately what's the return to New Zealand, to New Zealanders and to the government. That's a piece of work that uh, we're underway at the moment, um, and there'll be some information come out um, as we offer you an opportunity to engage in that process so we can actually go to government and explain. Um, and thirdly, um, the government are in their budget bid process. That's something that we get asked to be involved in um, every year. Uh, they've asked every um, Crown entity and government department to put together a, a cost pressure budget. So we know what the cost, what inflation, what the costs of um, airfares, travel, all of those things are doing to our sector. Just the cost of employment um, with inflation is actually costing us to deliver um, all the bits that we do. Um, we're at the table having that discussion at the moment. Quite where that will go, um, we're not quite sure. But I think what I wanted was for you to be reassured um, that we are aware of the challenges that everyone is facing and we're doing all that we can in engaging and lobbying with the government um, to, uh, to, uh, to put our best foot forward, not only in the cost uh, place, but also in the benefit and return on that investment that New Zealanders actually get. So moving towards our future together, um, collaboration. Collaboration and working together is something that's hugely important. Um, strength and adapt projects have uh, led us in a way that um, have allowed us to think differently, to do things and engage um, and think uh, um, of opportunities to secure us for the future. And collaboration is definitely one of those. A really good example is that is Swimming New Zealand have actually looked at how they can bring all the swimming codes together and actually work more effectively together and collaborate. It doesn't mean taking over. It doesn't mean only having one board. It doesn't mean it's just practically sitting down and thinking about um, how we can engage more effectively together. Customer focus is something that many of you will have heard me talk about. Um, it has a number of different names. It could be called locally led. It could be called um, focused on our customers. Um, excuse me. Um, but the reality is it's about putting the people that use our services, play active rec and support environments in a way so that we are delivering to what they need, not doing what we think we want and telling them, actually engaging with them directly. So um, it's something that was a consistent conversation inside Sport New Zealand as we think that we want more of our young people physically active. Ultimately, we need to talk to them and deliver to them what they want. And finally, um, we need to go into all of this discussion with an open mind. As I said, I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for the great mahi that you're doing, engaging with our young people to give them great experiences and make sure that they form that love 
in connection with physical activity. But the reality is we are going to face some challenges and we have to be open-minded to how that's going to present us and the change that we're going to need to go through as a sector to get to a place where not only we can survive, but we can thrive and we continue to deliver those great experiences that we know we always can. So thank you very much, I'm Ihi Nui. Um, I'm looking forward to spending two days with you, hearing from some great speakers, having some challenging engagement um, and conversations, um, but most importantly, um, getting to see you all over the next couple of days. Thank you very much.